So let's move on now. Easy peasy. So this is an interesting one, guys. It says express six as a binary number, right? Six to the base 10. We need to put this in binary. Do you guys remember how to convert binary? I hope you do. It's really easy, guys. All you need to do is just divide through by two. Cool. This is how you do it. So two goes into six, how many times? Uh, three times, right? And leaves a remainder of um, zero. Yeah. Right? Same thing here. So you check in for the remainders, guys, when you divide. Two can go into three as well and leave um, one, but a remainder one. And then two can go into one, leaving zero with a remainder one. So the answer for this, guys, you read it upwards as well. And we're reading it as one, one, zero to the base two is equal to six to the base 10. So this is my answer. And yep, that's my answer. Easy, right? It's really easy, guys. You just have to divide by two. You know, that's all you have to do <laughs> um, to convert to binary. It's very easy. It's rather simple. Talia, how do you feel about this one? It's okay? It's a two. Tajan, how are you feeling, man? Yes, sir. Nice, guys. So, uh, all right. Really quick, how, do you, how would you do um, decimal to binary? I mean, binary to decimal? Binary to decimal. Um, well, let's just talk about it really quickly before we move on to the next thing. It's kind of easy, Trey. Um, let me just give you an example. Suppose I have um, binary to decimal. Okay, so suppose I have one, one, zero, one, one, point one, one. I think this is a very good example to use. This one here is one multiplied by two to the one. Well, two to the zero, sorry about that. Um, this one here is plus, you get put a plus one times two to the one. This zero here would be zero times two to the two. This one here would be one times two to the three. And this one here is going to be one multiplied by two to the four. So that covers the first couple. And when you do it in decimal mode now, guys, for this one, so this, this point here, you're gonna add this to. This would be one times two to the negative one, which is the same thing as a half. So one times a half. And this would be plus one times two to the negative two, which would be one times a quarter, right? Two to, two to the negative two is one over two squared, which is a quarter. So we would actually end up with, I'm just gonna show you what this is. This is one, one, zero, one, one, point one, one in base two. In decimal, in decimal form, this would be one times two to the four is 16 plus eight, right? So let me just show you up here as well to kind of show you. Um, 16 plus eight plus zero, this is a zero, um, plus two plus one. And if we add all of these, 16 plus eight plus zero plus two plus one, um, this would actually give us how much? 26, I think. Uh, yeah, 26. And then we'll have to add these as well. So we'll have to add, add the half and we'll have to add the quarter. So a half is the same thing as 0 0.5 and a quarter is the same thing as 0 0.25, right? So this is gonna end up being 26.75 and that would be the answer. Oh, cool. okay, see that, yeah. So that's how you do it, guys. Just remember that every place is um, a product of two. So the first one is two to the zero, which is equal to one. So the first place is a one. The next place is a two. The next place is a, is a four. The next place is a eight. And the next place is a 16. This is a half. This is a quarter. This is one. The next space, if there was a one here, it would be one eighth. The next space would be one sixteenth. And that's how you do it, guys. You know? I get it. Um, one more thing before we move on. Um. Well, we don't really need to know base four and base eight so hard. Uh, it's on the syllabus. Um, so it's on the syllabus, but okay. truth is, I just don't think you can get it. You know what I mean? I'm <laughs> just being honest with you. Sir, <laughs> I just don't think you can get it. Huh? Was it in the list of topics? Uh, no, no, which makes it even worse. So it wasn't in the list of topics, guys. Don't worry. 
<laughs> yeah, don't worry. We need to we need to have that list ready, you know. We need to have that list ready for sure. And I didn't see binary in it, so I don't think we should spend too much time. So guys, let's focus on the next question now. It says John bought a car for sixty-five thousand dollars. All right. So congratulations, John. And it says, if the value of the car depreciates by 8% each year, how much will be the car, how much will the car be worth at the end of two years? Um, and I think this is really simple. So the depreciation formula, guys, um, it's always one minus the interest over 100 to the number of years multiplied by the principal. So that's all we have to do here, guys, to find out how much it costs at the end of two years. The principal is the amount the car costs, which is a 65,000. And then now all we have to do is do one minus um, 8%, eight over 100 to the two years, right? That's all we have to do. Cool. And if we put that in our calculators, guys, we're going to end up with 65,000 um, times one minus eight over 100 is 0 0.08. Um, so you're going to end up with 0 0.92 here. Well, let me just put it one minus 0 0.08 squared, and then we're going to get 65,000 times one my well, no, I subtract them now, 0 0.92 squared. And I just have to put that in my calculator now to find the answer. Let me just do that for you guys. Six five, six five zero zero zero. Well, no, let's find the 92, 0.92 squared first. Okay, so 0 0.92 um, squared. Um, and then we're gonna multiply that by 65,000. So the answer is, yeah, the answer is 55,000, 55,016. And this is the answer, right? Simple, it's really simple guys. And for those who don't remember the depreciation formula, this is it. This is it guys. Um, remember, remember you can always watch the depreciation video if you need any help. If it was appreciation, guys, there would just be a plus here. That would be the only difference to find out how much it's appreciated by. Um, but you can always check out the video I have on depreciation for this. Uh, Ariana, how you feel? This is okay? Yes, sir. Adrian, not too bad? Good, sir. All right, so let's move on now, guys, and let's look at this table. It says the table below shows the results obtained by a student in her CXC mathematics examination. The maximum mark for each paper is given in the third column of the table, All right? And it says here, determine as a percentage the student's final mark for the mathematics examination. So the first paper is, um, they got 55% out of 30. Um, the second one, they got 60% out of 50. And the last one, they got 80% out of the 20. So let's just work that out. It's kind of really easy. 55% times the 30 plus 60% times the 50 plus 80% times the 20. So this zero cancel this one. Um, this is going to be 165, right? 165 over 10. This is what you're gonna get 165 over 10, which is the same thing as 16.5. Then this, these two zeros cancel and I'm going to get 30 for that one. And then for the last one, these two zeros cancel as well. And I'm going to get 16. So when we add the three of these, this is going to be um, 62.5, I think. Is it? Yeah, 62.5 out of the 100. 
Yeah, so that's definitely the answer. 62.5 will definitely be your answer. Cool? Yes. All right, Romario, how are you feeling about this one? Not too bad? Yes, sir, it's good. Um, Ariana, feeling okay? Jaden, manageable? Yes, sir. Uh, chipped out halfway through there, but it looks manageable. All right, so this is manageable, guys. I think this is okay. Let's move on from this one. Um, and we're going to do this one. I think this is really simple. Um, I think Tori had asked me for this and I gave the solution to him for this question. So it's really simple and it says, make X the subject to the formula. Um, so Y is equal to X over five plus three P. And I need to make um, X the subject to the formula. So it's really easy guys. Um, all we have to do now is it says Y is equal to X over five plus three P. I just need to make X a subject. So the first thing I want to do is say Y minus three P. I need to carry this three P over to the left side because I want to make X by itself. And this is gonna be X over five. And then I just need to multiply both sides by five now to get rid of the five. And X is going to be equal to um, five times Y minus three P in brackets, and this is the answer. I think this is really simple. Simple, right guys? Trey, how is it? I think it's so simple. I think I should send you guys some little questions like these. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah I got that, I got Tajan, that. how you feel about this one? I got that one. It's a good show. All right. Um, Nikolai, how do you feel about this one, man? I understand it better now. Sorry, go ahead. I understand it better. You understand it better? Okay. Yeah. All right. So you'll need a video on it, Tajan. No problem. Um, I have a video on this already, actually, so I don't mind sending a video on this into the group. And don't worry, guys, I'm actually going to send you guys some of these little short questions uh, moving forward, seeing that we only have 14 days left. So since we only have 14 days left, guys, don't worry, you're going to do a couple of these questions. I'm going to send them to you. Please just do them. Try them out. They aren't too hard. Um, we just need to do the revision now, guys. 14 days left, two weeks. Let's do the revision. So in this one now, guys, it says solve the following equation by factorization. Factorization. So I have to factorize here. This is really easy, guys, like really, really easy. This is 2x squared minus 9x is equal to 0. And it says solve by using factorization. So how do we solve this, guys? The only thing we can do here is take an x out of it. That's all we can do. So we're going to end up with 2x. Um, minus nine is equal to zero. And now we can solve, guys. How do we solve this? Well, there are only two situations we have here. Either x is equal to zero or two x minus nine is equal to zero. That's all we can do. That's all we can do to solve this um, question. So, these are the two situations. Either x is equal to zero, meaning this x here is equal to zero, or two x minus nine is equal to zero because they're being multiplied by each other. So you can break them up like that, cool? And we're going to say, no, we have to solve for x in the other one. So we're going to say two x is equal to nine and x is equal to nine over two, right? Nine over two is the same thing as um, 4.5. So my answer would be that X is equal to zero or X is equal to 4.5. Cool. And this solves this question. And? Sorry? Would it be or or and? Uh, I would say and. Okay. Uh, it can be and. I mean, it can be and. But I would genuinely say or 
I would say or because the thing is, the reason why it can't be and is because saying and would assume that you can put a zero here and a 4.5 here as well. That's not really what you want to say, you know. <laughs> you kind of want to say that either x can be zero, meaning you put zero here and you end up with zero. Because that's the thing. Just look at it this way, two guys. If x is zero, right, x times 2x minus 9 is equal to zero. If x is zero, you'd have zero times 2 times zero minus 9 is equal to zero. And this would end up being zero times minus nine, which is equal to zero, which is zero is equal to zero. So that's right. Now the other situation guys is if we put 4.5 in the same equation. So if we say 4.5 times two times 4.5, which is uh, nine. nine minus nine is equal to zero. Um, and we're going to end up with the same situation. We're going to get 4.5 times zero is equal to zero. And we're going to get zero is equal to zero. So it's correct for both of these values. But suppose we put another value in there. I'm just, I just trying to be smart now. I'm just showing you guys how to be smart here. Suppose we put another value in there. Suppose we put three times two times three minus nine is equal to zero. It's not going to be equal to zero, guys. It's going to be three times six minus nine, which is three times minus three, which is minus nine. So I'm just trying to show you the only two values that you really have for this question to find um, X being zero is either X is equal to zero or X is equal to 4.5. There's no other equation that's going to give you this, this result. If you put any other number in there, you're not gonna get zero. And the equation is not correct. Make sense? I think I explained this really well. <laughs> I think I explained it to the best I could, best of my ability. Yeah. All right, so that figures this one out. And let's move on. I think we're okay now. Let me check with Tajan. Tajan, you feeling okay? Yes, Not sir. too bad, right? So, uh, Nathan is here. I was wondering what's happening with Nathan, actually. I was concerned. Hey, Nathan, what's up, man? It's happy. I'm happy to see you, bro. I'm happy to see you, Nathan. Um, so, Nathan, you ready? So guys, this, one's, this one here says a farmer wishes to enclose, let me just check what time it is as well. Okay, so a farmer wishes to enclose a rectangular plot with a wire fence, cool, all right. It says the width of the plot is three meters long. So the width is three meters, well, three meters less than the length. Three meters less than the length. The width of the plot is three meters less than the length, okay. so. The width is L minus 3M, three meters, L minus three. And the length is just the length. The length is the longer side, right? Here to here. And the width is here to here, right? So W is equal to L minus three. And it says here, given that the enclosed area of the fence is 378 meters squared, show that F, is that F? Jano, I can't see. Is that F, guys? Sorry, that's L squared, isn't oh, it? Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's L squared. I'm so sorry. So it's L squared, L squared minus 3L minus 378 is equal to zero. Okay. So let's think about what they're trying to say here. Um, yes, let's just think about what they're trying to say here. Well, let me leave the rectangle there, though. So they're trying to say we need to show that that is equal to that. And I think it's kind of really easy to show. Um, this is the, the area, right? But the area for any rectangle, guys, is equal to length times width. Am I right? And in this case, the length is equal to L and the width is equal to L minus 3. Does that make sense? So the area is going to be equal to L squared minus 3L. 
And that's perfectly sensible. Am I right? I think this makes so much sense. And didn't they say that the area is equal to 378 meters squared? Yeah, they said it. So 378 meters squared, which is the area, is equal to L squared minus 3L. So all we need to do now, guys, is just carry the, this to the other side of the equation. Um, or yeah, carry this to the other side of the equation and we're going to end up with L squared minus 3L. Well, let me write it this way. Um, zero is equal to L squared minus 3L minus 378. And then of course, we can show that the same thing, L squared minus 3L minus 378 is equal to zero. So I think this is really easy, guys. They're just asking you for the area, guys. Um, and if you try to find the area, you will notice that the area is equal to L squared minus 3L. And you can just set it out just like that to show, right? Sir, I have a question. Why did they put it equal to zero? Uh, they're just trying to say here, let me just try to show you with even more detail. They're just trying to say here that the area is equal to the L squared minus the 3L. But they're just trying to show that it, this, this, the equation still satisfies itself. So 378 is definitely equal to L squared minus 3L, right? But they, they carried this over here, guys, to just try to see if you have common sense, to be honest. <laughs> they're just trying to see if you have common sense. So. When you carry this over to the right side, it ends up being minus 378, right? So they're just trying to see if you recognize that the left-hand side of the equation has to be equal to the right-hand side. And that's really just true, guys. When it comes to math, the left-hand side of the equation has to be equal to the right-hand side. So it's just a way of saying, is the left-hand side still equal to the right-hand side, given that the area is the length times the width? That's all. You know, it's just, a, it's a weird question. But that's all they're really asking you. You understand what I mean, Dahlia? Yes, sir. All right, Nathan, make sense to you? Definitely. All right, so this was really simple. Nikolai, making sense? So wait, the, the answer came to being L squared minus 3L equals 378 because left-hand side equals our answer. Yeah, that's all. That's all, guys. It's, it's not really rocket science. You just need to show. It says show that. So you just need to show it. Find the area um, and show it. That's all you really need to do. It's not really anything very difficult. You just need to show how you get the same equation. You know? And that's the only way. Length times width. And they said the length is L and the, the width is L minus three. So it's really easy. It's a breeze. So Nikolai, you ready for this one? Yeah. Yeah. So Nikolai, I think you have exams tomorrow. And I think you actually have a question like this coming on the exam maybe. It's possible. So let's do it together. It says here, the force F applied to an object is directly proportional to the extension E. So guys, do you guys remember the direct proportion formula? It's Y is equal to KX. It's really easy. But in this case, guys, the F is going to be the Y. The force F is directly proportional to the extension E, which is K. There's always a constant, guys, times the E. This is how you always do, do a direct proportion question, guys. This is the general formula for direct proportion. And the one that they mentioned first is always the Y and the one that they mentioned second is always the E. Cool. Does that make sense? All right. Yeah, I think it makes perfect sense. And then, cool. So we're good now. And this one now says the force F, yeah, that's it. And it says represent the information as an equation in terms of F, E, 
and an appropriate constant k. So that's exactly what we did here. F is equal to ke, and we're done. <laughs> that's the one mark. It's so easy, guys. Jeez, I'm peace. Easy, peasy. Lemon squeezy. Jaden, easy, right? Yeah, I can see it, sir. Yeah, it's so easy, man. I mean, I think this is so easy. Uh, Tajan, easy. Trey? Yeah. Manageable. All right, so let's move on, guys. Cool. So let's move on. Uh, let's finish up this now. It says, um, the incomplete table below shows the corresponding values for F and E. So I have to write back the same equation, F is equal to KE. And it says using the equation, um, find the values of X and Y. So this is actually not bad at all, guys. All we have to do for this one, this is a good part two question still. All we have to do for this one, guys, is we just have to find the constant. So when F is equal to eight, E is equal to 0 0.2, right? So when F is equal to eight, K multiplied by 0 0.2 should satisfy the equation. So we can use this now, guys, to, to solve for K. So 0 0.2 times K is equal to eight. So K is equal to eight divided by 0 0.2. Does that make sense? Make sense, guys? So 8 divided by 0.2 now will give us the constant, which is 40. So that's what our constant is, guys. K is equal to 40. And once we find this constant now, we can find the values of the other two. Remember, the equation is F is equal to KE. So in order to find the X here for this E, we have to use 25, which is the force, is equal to 40 times X. We don't know what X is. And in this case, 40x would be equal to 25. So x would be equal to 25 over 40. Um, and I think that's the same thing as 5 over 8. Am I right? Yeah, I think that's the same thing as x is equal to 5 over 8, um, which is uh, 62, 0.625, I think. x is equal to 0.625. Yeah, and then this one now, the y, f is equal to ke for the y now, um, for the y value. Uh, this would be y is equal to k, which is still 40. Remember the constant is 40, guys. 40 times e, which is 3.2, would give us the answer. So y in this case would just be 40 times 3.2. Um, and I think that's... Uh, it's definitely 122 over 10 times 40. Uh, I think it's 128. Am I right? I think so. Yes, sir. All right. So yeah, I think it's 128. So why is equal to 128? Cool. Um, yeah, and I think that's perfectly cool. I think that's perfectly cool. Um, and that's how we work it out, guys. The first thing the first thing we're always going to need to do in this situation, guys, is just find the constant. That's the first thing we need to do. And once we find this constant, guys, we can use any of the values in the formula, the same f is equal to ke, to find the other values. Cool? Does that make sense? Hope it makes sense, guys. Give me one second, guys. One moment, I want to use the bathroom.